Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the end of the back end for Disney. Okay. The end of the back end. And, and we're going to talk about the back end and how Disney is basically uh, discussing limiting profit participation in new TV shows for showrunners. Now, uh, this is kind of a complicated Hollywood type thing. Uh, we're going to read an article and kind of talk about it a little bit. But basically, the holy grail for a TV producer, a TV person, showrunner, whatever. Sometimes the actors even get deals on it, too. Yeah, is is getting that syndication deal and getting, like, endless royalty checks. And now Disney, of all people... Well, it's not just Disney, to be fair. The other ones are doing it, but Disney's really pushing, I think, for it. They're pushing for it because they don't want to keep giving royalty checks out to people. So what's going to happen is basically like you taught you were saying before people are going to kind of be work for hire you're going to do your show walk away from it that's all the money you and get then, paid right and, and then it. they can take it and keep running it all wherever they Reboot want to it. run it and and they keep getting the money from it so we're going to talk about that in this episode so if you haven't subscribed to Clownfish TV already, please do so. We passed 60,000 subs this week. We're hoping for 100,000 by the end of the year. Yeah, I don't hopefully. want to say the end of the week. I'm like, oh, yeah, that'd that'd be be miracle. Better, that's not going to happen. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, the end of the year would be great. Um, it's it's uh, awesome, the support that you guys have, have shown us. Uh, we really appreciate it. We never thought we'd get this far. We started doing this like a year or so ago. So thank you so much. Uh, for that. Thank you for that. So before we get into this article, Geeky is actually working on a story on pirates and princesses, which I will link in the description right. to this. And it kind of outlines some of this too. But this version is coming from the Los Angeles Times. The end of the back end, Disney wants to limit profit participation on its new TV shows. And how they found out about this was they actually were talking to the, to the entertainment attorneys, to the agents, and all, and to you know some people that were you know being talked to about this mm -hmm. because this has been something that they started this summer. Yeah. And like I said again, to be fair, Netflix, Amazon, they some of, they've done some of this already. So Disney didn't invent it, but Disney's trying to jump in on it because they're like, wait, we get to keep more money? Hot damn. Uh, yeah. We know how Disney is when it comes to money. Hot damn, they like money. So let's talk about this. So the Walt Disney Company became a dominant player in television production with its acquisition of Fox assets earlier in the year. It's pushing to transform how TV show creators are compensated for their work. Not for the better, not, the, not to the benefit of the TV show creators. For decades, the brass ring for showrunners was seeing their series hit the 100 episode mark. Uh, shows reaching that milestone usually achieved at some point and not the not easily attained fifth season of a network run became ripe for syndication and the rich financial rewards that came with it. Yeah, so basically they all wanted syndication. Yeah, because there are people like, okay, people are like, okay, so-and-so had a TV show back in the day and they haven't worked in 20 years. How How come? Because they're still getting royalty checks right. that's off why, of their sitcom. That's why when you see on the internet and social media, when a show hits 100 episodes, they have a big cake and they have a big party for 100 episodes. There's a reason. Yeah, because it goes to syndication. You know, you look at shows like Friends. You look at, like Friends, th those people, they don't have to ever work again. They don't have to ever work again. Seinfeld, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and even oh, going... Seinfeld just got a deal was on Netflix or Netflix got Seinfeld. One of the one of the streaming services just got a Oh, deal. okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying like these sitcoms that have, you know, five, ten years worth of, uh, you know, content, they do get the syndication package. Um, well, okay, Cosby Show. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cosby Show was syndicated for years and then pretty much every network pulled the Cosby Show uh, out of reruns after the the fiasco with Bill Cosby, which probably you know pulled the plug on revenue, mm -hmm. on royalty checks for people associated with the show. So the streaming revolution that upended the TV business is starting to disrupt this compensation system, which helped finance the purchase of many a Bel Air mansion. As of this summer, Disney is pressing TV producers and other profit participants in its shows to accept a new formula offering profit sooner in exchange for complete control of any future licensing revenue. So we're talking like a handful of beans now. Mm -hmm. or we'll but they get the whole, they get the whole, uh, you know, plant later. Right. The, the LA Times has learned from conversations with Hollywood agents, attorneys, and union representatives. Such deals would limit the financial windfall of major hits like The Simpsons or Grey's Anatomy. Disney wants its payment system in place as it approaches the launching of the streaming service Disney Plus. Yeah, so they started this really, they hit it really hard this summer, I guess, 
with these new deals and things. I don't think people are going to go for it. But they, they brought up to. Amazon, Netflix have been making these deals for a few years. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Disney didn't invent this. This is their. They're just trying to cash in on it. But uh, Netflix and Amazon actually have done this before. So they'd be the first legacy media company to to require them for their shows. That and that could make it easier for other studios to to demand the same things. Right. So this could be the new normal. It could be that. You know the days of, of of getting endless royalties on your work uh, are over. See, know? and the thing is with streaming because stuff gets on there and it could be it be it'll be binge for years to come. Yeah. You know that I mean I do agree something needs to change because it is completely different how people you know t- take in their entertainment now as it was like 10, 15 years ago. So I get I get that some changes need to be made, but this change there, there's got to be a compromise here somewhere. This is too far the other way I think. Yeah. Go ahead. So. While some have signed these deals, others have balked, sources say, Disney is asking producers to accept contracts that would give them a share of profits starting in the second year of the series, according to a Fox contract document obtained by the Times. Producers will also be eligible for a series of bonus payments based on the show's success and longevity. The trade-off is that Disney would control all licensing of the series to local TV stations cable networks, streaming services, and foreign broadcasters essentially buying out whatever share of profits are generated by those sources. So you might get uh, you might get money quicker in the second season before you hit 100 episodes. You might get some more money quicker, but over the long run, you're not going to be getting that that money. It kind of reminds me of uh, you know, when you see those lawyers on daytime TV. They're like, you know, we'll give you a lump sum payment for mm-hmm. your... You need selling. cash now. Need cash now. Yeah. We're going to take this massive, massive cut, and you're going to get one lump sum, but it's going to be a fraction of what you would have gotten right. had you just waited. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're looking at here. So the new deal structure, the contours of which were first reported by Deadline in July, is already getting pushback from agents and lawyers representing talent who believe it will substantially reduce income for creators whose shows became hits. Producers who can get checks for their involvement in a project years after its initial run are also skeptical. Uh, they didn't punish Lucille Ball when I Love Lucy was a massive hit 20 years after it was canceled, said Propagate Content Chairman Ben Silverman, who has an ownership stake in the office, which he developed in the U.S. for NBC. Which NBC is trying to make new versions of. Right, and that's what this is about. Like, If these shows are huge hits on streaming services 20, 30 years from now, you know, we're going to have to keep cutting checks to the, the Right, showers. we want to take all the money. We already gave you a bonus 20 years ago. You know, like it. So we have another lawyer who said she had clients who had not signed on to the deals with the Disney-owned entities due to objections to the new plan. She said the choice is the clients, but she's also reluctant to close deals based on how those series bonuses are currently structured. They can run it 10,000 times on their streaming service, and they can run it uh, 10,000 times on their network. They can sell tons of advertising, tons of subscriptions, and you won't get any additional money. Yeah, so I think she summed up pretty well. Yeah, so this is... You know, and this is very much how publishing works. Yeah, I, that's the, my first thought um, when I wrote the article, which isn't up yet. But but I was thinking about publishing too, and I was thinking about the deals with the theme park rights. Yeah, you can ex- you can explain that. Okay, now. so yeah, theme park rights. So all of this, all of this like intermedia IP has become a huge deal in the publishing uh, circles, I guess. Simon, I think it was Simon and Schuster. Now, at one point we had an agent, at one point we were shopping uh, graphic novel, Mm -hmm. graphic novel pitches around to different publishers. And if I recall correctly, Simon and Schuster, because of Harry Potter, had a clause in their contract that they had all the theme park rights to your property. Even if it was something stupid, like your book is about uh, two old ladies that fall in love, that that would never, actually become a theme park ride even something like that you're signing away your rights because scholastic was very short-sighted they never in a million years thought harry potter would become a huge theme park draw Mm -hmm. Uh, like it has they lost all that money because right so now they're trying to cover all the bases now they're like well let's think about the future you know 20 30 years from now we want to own everything yeah so we already saw this before in publishing and now they're starting to do it with the television shows yeah, so the uh, new approach has drawn the attention of uh, the actors' union, the actors' unions whose members can be awarded, rewarded with profit sharing when they star in hit shows. We're monitoring these changes very closely and would be concerned about any attempt to cap or shortchange back end payments for talent. Yeah, again, the Friends stars they don't need to work anymore. Why? Right. Everybody's like, where'd David Schwimmer go? I'm like, well, David Schwimmer is swimming in royalty checks. Mm-hmm. He doesn't need to work anymore, but this deal would change that. So you won't have any people like David Schwimmer 
going forward. He'll make his money during his run. Um, he'll probably get paid more, maybe, possibly, during his run. And then after that, he's going to have to go find a job or, or be an Uber driver or something. Right. You know? Or get another show. Right, right. So, <laughs> yeah, Disney declined to make an executive available to discuss I'm the I'm sure plan. they did. But the rationale it has presented to agents, according to people familiar with the talks, is that a change to the long-running system is necessary because traditional syndication and foreign markets are deteriorating. Yeah, this is interesting. I actually read this before. They're saying that because of streaming services and things, people are just watching that. And then they're trying to argue that there's lower uh, ratings because the TV stations and cable networks are spending less on demand for U.S. programming overseas. And they're making yeah. just making their own shows. You know, how dare they make their own how things? How dare they? So they're just investing in their own shows and they're not giving Disney as much money, basically. So they're talking, yeah, about the decline in, in traditional broadcast viewership. Disney has argued that lower ratings have resulted in TV stations and cable networks spending less on off-network series than the demand for U.S. programming among international broadcasters is slow, blah, 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 blah. Uh, competitors see Disney's move as an opening to lure creators. We at Fox Entertainment still believe in creating and sharing with our talent the holy grail of television, the back end. Yeah, it looks like mm -hmm. the, ba the back end is, the, is very, very uh, appropriate because, mm -hmm. you know, bend over. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Disney's deals are similar to offers TV talent agents have already accepted from Amazon. That's what I'm Netflix. saying. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's not, they didn't invent it. Amazon and Netflix have already been doing it, which is why I led off with that. But it's it's very important that if Disney adopts this, it could really change everything the whole way around. Yeah, so this is uh, Amazon rewards profit participation in the third season of a show based on a value the company determines for. Netflix, this might actually explain why, this might actually explain why so many shows are canceled after yeah. two or three seasons. Yeah. Netflix pays creators for the cost of production and adds a negotiated profit payment on top of its starting with the very first episode, but creators give up the rights to any back-end revenue. So you look at Stranger Things, mm -hmm. which actually has quite a bit of merchandise associated with it. Do the showrunners not get any of that? They No, this, the, since that started a while ago, they might still be okay. Um, it, this is more of a newer thing. But, you know, it is interesting. You see these shows that make it two or three seasons, and then suddenly the show's canceled. Because they don't want to go any further, because then they have to start paying people more. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, because I think they're just like, well, fine, you got your two or three seasons. Uh, we have having to pay you more, and we get to keep this content on our streaming service forever. But I think the newer shows, you're going to start seeing them go past two or three seasons because they own it afterwards. So what difference does it make? You know, they can go ahead yeah. and make it run longer. Um, so compensate. This is interesting, too. They would be eligible for pre-negotiated bonus payments for Emmy and Golden Globe nominations. And it shows ranking in the Nielsen's ratings. Mm -hmm. So, again, this is, you know, we talked about awards being a kind of a marketing ploy. Uh, and they get they actually get a bonus if they get an Emmy or, or to Gold To me, Gold this seems more like you wouldn't got a job at the canning factory and you get bonuses for performance, but when you leave the canning factory, that's it. As before, you were a partner, yeah. and it was more like a partnership, you know, a thing where we both got a cut of it. You got money, you know, we'll promote it, but you get a cut over, you know, over the years uh, um, just because you were partners. So it's going more from a partnership to work for hire, which is like, you know, I got a job, you know, and I'm not, when, I, when I'm gone from my job, I don't get anything else. You know, that's what it, that's what yeah, it pretty much put it is. Put it easily, you're, simply. That's you're, what it you're sounds You're work like. for hire now. You're not like self-employed, and it's kind of the same with uh, you know we're seeing the publishing deals too. Like I know when I had uh, Doug Tenaple on, he said that the uh, the advances were actually dropping on graphic novels now. They've been, and uh, you know it's it's like and if the books don't earn out, meaning you don't pay back your advance, which is happening more and more sporadically, I guess, because there's there's more content out there and, and fewer bookstores. Then you're basically getting stuck with, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for and that's all you ever get. Yeah, two years worth of work, you know, on a graphic novel, and then you gotta pay your agent, you know, fifteen, twenty percent. Right. So it's like, geez. Uh so compensation for revenue generated through music publishing, merchandising, DVD, and video downloads would also be paid from a bonus pool. A program's popularity on Disney Plus and Hulu would be rewarded as well. A major benefit for Disney, according to agents who've studied the deal, is that the company would no longer have to determine fair market value before putting one of the broadcast or cable series it owns on Disney Plus. So they wouldn't have to pay fair market value to people if they want to put on Disney Plus, is what they're saying. Right. So this is about friends in the office. A way to bypass the situation they faced with uh, is they had to outbid Netflix to get the rights back for their own properties, the office and friends. Um... Yeah, so, they did. They outbid. They outbid Netflix. 
Now, this is interesting because we talk about Hollywood accounting. Mm -hmm. And uh, profit participation is a tricky thing because I know it was David Prowse who was supposed to get royalties for Darth Vader. And uh, he supposedly had some kind of like profit participation. But because of Hollywood accounting, Return of the Jedi never, ever made a profit. He never got paid anything additional for, for being Darth Vader in three of the most successful science fiction movies of all time. Mm -hmm. So the new compensation model gives Disney the flexibility to move shows from its TV networks to Disney Plus without any outside bidders driving up the price. Some entertainment industry guild members feel that the companies may go down the same road with residual payments and limit those as well. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. I think that is exactly what's going to happen. And like you said, I think we're basically looking at a work for hire situation. You're hired to do a show. You get your bonuses at the time, but you're not going to retire off the success of, of a show that you created and pitched and, well, and, and ran. That, and, and this is where I thought was going to be a problem, and they mentioned this too, is um, they're talking about the big name talent will negotiate better deals, but the younger writers and producers may be willing to accept the plan to be part of a new television age where streaming offers the flexibility of shorter episode runs. So they're afraid younger people are just going to jump on it um, just because, you know, where else are you going to get in? You have to accept the terms. They own the big things. You have to accept it. And they said up here too, um, that they said that there already are uh, young writers and producers that have signed on to the terms. Yep. Um, and some agents are working with them. And yeah, I think we're going to see this. You wonder, you wonder why, and I think this comes down to economics. You see a lot of people are like, why are these shows so garbage? Why are they hiring all these Tumblr people to do, to do shows? You know, and I think it comes down to the economics. Yeah, you get, I, you get what you pay for though. You get what you pay for. But the reason that, you have a lot of inexperienced people running shows now is because that's, you know, who's going to take these kinds of deals. But then it's going to get to a point where kind of the old guard or people that have, you know, more self-respect are going to price themselves out of the industry because, you know, nobody's going to pay them what they want. So you're you going to get more of the same. And, and here's the thing. It's just... And what's not fair is, like, if you want to break in, you're going to have to take what you can get to get a chance to break in, and then you're kind of stuck with what, you know, you've accepted. So when they own, like, if you, you, you want a car, for example, and, all, and the same companies own all the car dealerships, and they're overcharging, like, way above market value for the cars, you want a car, you're going to have to take what they give you. It's like that. You want a show, you're going to have to accept what they say, or you don't get the show. So if you want a chance, you're going to have to take it, and that's, that's the problem. Yeah, that's where this kind of comes into animation. Disney just signed a deal uh, a couple months ago with 17 different animators. Uh, a lot of you know, some of them are experienced, some of them aren't. But they said that they think a lot of the content is going to be for Disney Plus. And again, these people are going to work on the show. They're probably going to get two or three seasons, maybe, and then they're going to be out the door, possibly not getting any more money. Right. You know, because this is probably this is probably the deal that a lot of them signed. Right. But like I said again, it's not just Disney who's doing this. Right. And I do, I do understand where they're coming from with the changes in the way we consume uh, media. There needs to be some changes in the way that they do these deals. And I 100% agree that there needs to be changes made. But there's got to be some kind of compromise that can be reached because this is too far the other way. I think there needs to be something, you know, some meet in the middle type fair. You need to be, it still needs to be a partnership and not a work for hire. I, I think. Yeah, I agree. I think what's going on too is there's so much content now that I think individual pieces of content and content creators are going to be devalued. Because I, I agree. There's so much and it's supply and demand. It reminds me of web comics. Mm -hmm. Back in the day when they web comics started, you know, what was that like 2000 and I mean they were late late 90s. They were early late 2000s, 90s, yeah. but I mean they got really they started picking up popularity early 2000s. If you were in early you know, you could make money because there wasn't much competition. People were looking for things to read and, and, and their ads were good and you can make money. But now it's impossibly hard to get found when you do a webcomic now because you do, everybody and their brother has a webcomic. And it's kind of like that with these with all these content shows and these shows, everybody, they're picking up all these shows and it's really hard for one show to stand out because there's so many other shows. And it reminds me of that. Yeah, and that's just it. We've got, you know, four or five streaming services starting within the next six to eight months. I mean, you got Apple, Disney, HBO, Peacock, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so there's four or five, you know, 
and and they're all creating content at this ridiculous rate and they're and, all putting their old stuff on there too yeah and back in the day when you watch tv you get how many shows a, in a season it wouldn't be that many it'd be your old favorites and there'd be 13 a, to 26 there'd be usually. some yeah you know, so it wasn't like you know okay all the shows were going to probably do relatively well because there wasn't a lot of competition well now you're talking about like you said this glut of new shows and yeah. all this new con- new content they're producing on top of the popular shows that they're they're promoting on their their streaming services too the old favorites i mean it's just if you're a new show it's gonna be really hard i think that's they're gonna like well i'm not gonna pull the money into this and, yeah. if, and if it does kind of break out success i want to make sure i keep all the money from this so we've gone from we've gone as far as the disposability now entertainment's always been kind of disposable even going back to early television with where a lot of the stuff was done live and they never really even conceived of, of reruns but we've gone from shows that are like, you know, Fine China that are, are, are perennial classics, you know, like I Love Lucy and maybe the Mary Tyler Moore show. And, you know, you could argue newer shows like Friends or whatever, that they're going to be around for decades to the come office. to to. Yeah, The Office to Chinette, which is like, OK, it's it, it's going to be around a while. It's a little sturdy to now. We're just now we're at the like the now dollar. we're sitting off of napkins. Yeah, we're eating off of napkins now. And that's basically all the money that companies like Disney, I think are going to put into this is like, we're eating off of napkins and we're going to, people are going to watch it once. They're going to forget about it in six months. Cause we're going to move on to something else. So we don't need some long-term plan in place because none of these shows are going to be relevant. And right. You know, and like we're used to the networks would promote. They only had those many shows. So they promote the hell out of it. So they would be perennial favorites because they were promoted. They would be the China. Now they're just like disposable. Got some views. Good. Next. Got some views. Yeah. Next. And if this one happens to become China, well, we'll give them a little bit of bonus and then we'll just, you know, keep promoting that until we can just kick them out and take it. Yep. So, I mean, so that's that's what you're looking at though, but this is going to be the new normal. This is the new yeah, normal with, for Hollywood. For, yeah. Streaming services in general. It is. Yeah. Um, so if you're going to work in TV, you're going to create content for any of these streaming services. This is what you're looking at. Uh, don't, don't expect to, retire and move to your mansion in Bel Air, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, not now. Not now. So um, anyway, we're going to wrap this one up. Yeah. Okay. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. This has been Neon and Geeky. Bye. Goodbye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.